Oh wow, look at the time, it's already October. I wonder what great variety of things are being baked right now. When I said that there was pumpkin everything, I wasn't lying. And now that it's spooky season, everything is gonna get exponentially more pumpkin themed. It continues like this until about November, where everything just immediately converts to Christmas. Now some would think it's a good thing to try to be different and to bake different things than what everyone else is doing right now, but originality is overrated, so let's make some pumpkin bread. Today's recipe comes from Bobby Flay's Bar American Cookbook, but I found it on Epicurious.com. This recipe was rated 4 out of 4 with 129 reviews, so expect nothing but the best from this recipe. With all that said, let's jump right into washing our hands. After that, we can gently begin the recipe, no jumping required. You'll want to start by preheating your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and greasing up your favorite and most successful 9 inch loaf pan. After you've chosen your favorite, you can grab a small bowl and what does that say? B? O? O? Boo? Ah, God. Sorry, it seems that I... I accidentally grabbed a, I grabbed a bowl instead of a bowl. It's a mistake anyone can make. But now that I have an actual bowl, we can continue. Add in one and three fourth cups of flour, one half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, one half teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one half teaspoon of nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon of ground allspice, which if you don't have, it can be easily made by adding every single spice into a bowl. Every. Single. One. And finally, one fourth teaspoon of ground cloves. Then you can whisk everything together. While whisking, you can double check to make sure there are no ghosts in your house. One time I forgot to check for ghosts and they ran off with all my bread and went to do ghost stuff. Once you've made sure there are no ghosts, you can continue on to creaming your butter. You'll want to add four tablespoons of butter, one and one half cups of sugar, and one fourth cup of vegetable oil to a bowl to mix. I decided to use a stand mixer to cream my butter, but you can use a turbo whisk if you don't have a stand mixer. Or if you're feeling extra risky, you could try to convince a ghost to whisk it manually for you. Once you find a way to mix it, you'll want to beat it all together until it's light and fluffy. Once everything is thoroughly beat, you can add in one cup of pumpkin puree. Once you've added in your pumpkin, you can mix it all together until it's just combined. After that, you'll want to very carefully add in two eggs, one at a time. I've always wished it was a simpler way to add in eggs, but once you've somehow got both of them in there, you'll want to mix them in until they're just incorporated. Finally, you'll want to reintroduce your flour mixer and two-third cups of water to the party while mixing it all together. Once it's all just combined, you can pour it into your favorite greased pan and bake it for one hour to an hour and 15 minutes, or until it passes the toothpick test. Once it's toothpick certified, you can let it cool for 10 minutes in the pan before moving it onto a wire rack to cool. While it's cooling, I think I might take a oh, little, little nap. Wow, what a great nap. I think I'll go have a slice of pumpkin bread now that's all nice and cool. Wait, what? Where did it go? What does a ghost even need pumpkin bread for?